In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. On this occasion of Mass and the administration of the Sacrament of Confirmation, I'd like to just say a few words about the topic of grace. Grace is a wonderful thing. It's a supernatural help of God to assist all of us. And there's two types of grace. There's habitual grace. We receive sanctifying grace when we were baptized. And habitual means it stays with us. It's the life of God in our soul. There's also another type of grace, and that's called actual grace. It's something that God gives us momentarily to assist us, to inspire us, to know the will of God, gives us the help to be able to do the will of God. And when we think of it, grace we know is something invisible. You might see a picture in the imitation of Christ or a spiritual picture of a saint kneeling there, and they show this light coming down from heaven, symbolizing grace. But we know that we don't see that. Grace is invisible. To help us to understand when we're getting grace, Jesus instituted the seven sacraments. The seven sacraments are outward signs, outward actions with words, and Christ attached to those outward signs graces to be given in our soul. When you were baptized, the priest poured the water over your forehead and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Outwardly, you see water being poured over the forehead, hearing the words, but what's taking place in the soul? That's the important thing. Original sins washed away and the life of God comes into our soul for the first time. We think of all the sacraments. They cover all of our spiritual needs. After we receive the life of sanctifying grace and baptism, if we have the misfortune of falling into sin, we can go to confession. Jesus gave this a power to his apostles and said, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And our Lord provides in our weakness. This is the time of Corpus Christi. Just yesterday we celebrated that great feast. You're going to have the Corpus Christi procession on Sunday. And Jesus instituted the wonderful sacrament of the Eucharist. Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. This is a wonderful sacrament. Christ, whole and entire, under the appearance of bread and wine. We know that when Jesus was going to teach this wonderful doctrine, he proceeded before he taught by working a most stupendous miracle. He fed thousands of people with a few loaves of bread. The people seeing this miracle were just in awe. Only God could do this. Our Lord disposed them before he actually taught them this wonderful doctrine. And then he he reminded them about how in the desert... Many, many centuries ago, the Israelites wandered into the desert and God fed them miraculously with this manna, this bread from heaven. And then Jesus said, I'm going to give you the real bread from heaven. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. When we receive Holy Communion, Jesus comes into us in the most intimate manner to strengthen us and help us in our weakness. Tonight, those who are going to be confirmed We're going to impose our hand on your head. We're going to anoint your forehead with the sign of the cross with chrism. And we're going to say the words, I sign you with the sign of the cross, and I confirm you with the chrism of salvation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus instituted the sacrament to strengthen us. The chrism, the anointing with chrism, signifies strengthening and the imposition of hands, the coming of grace. The Holy Ghost will come upon you to help you to be a soldier of Christ. Like I said, we don't see grace. It's invisible. But we can see the effects of God's grace often. 
You know, in the epistle of St. Paul, and St. Paul was a very holy man, he was scourged and stoned and shipwrecked, and he went through all these sufferings for Christ. And after all those sufferings, our Lord tested him even further. St. Paul says, unless the, the greatness of the revelations puff me up, there was given me a, 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 a buffet of Satan, a sting of the flesh. He said, three times I asked God to deliver me. God, take this temptation away from me. And what did God say to St. Paul? My grace is sufficient for thee. Our strength is in our weakness. We are all weak. We all have temptation, and we all have need of God's grace. And our strength will also be in our weakness. Not relying on ourselves, but relying on the grace of God. The grace of God will sustain us and strengthen us and support us in our weakness. And thus God is given glory. When we think of our Lord when he founded his church, as we said so often before, He chose the most unqualified men, these simple, ignorant fishermen. And these men were going to spread his gospel throughout the world. And our Lord, in his wisdom, he was going to show that his church was not the work of man, but the work of God. And so the apostles, after the coming of the Holy Ghost upon them, they were enlightened, they were strengthened, they preached the gospel to all nations, and they sealed their... They're preaching with their blood. We look through the whole history of the church, how often God chooses the weak and the foolish to confound the proud of the world. And thus it will be in all all of our lives. The deciding factor if we go to heaven or we don't make it is going to be the grace of God. It's not going to be us. Yes, we have to cooperate with God's grace, but it's God's grace that helps us and sustains us. So as you get confirmed tonight, there won't be some rays of light coming down from heaven. You may not even feel anything, but know for certain, and we have our Lord's words for it and the word of God, that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. You'll get an increase of sanctifying grace in your soul and a special sacramental grace to make you a strong and fervent Christian and soldier of Christ. We need, all of us, as much help as we can. We fight a battle every day for the salvation of our soul, to keep God's commandments, to overcome temptation and sin, and to practice virtue. And so as we receive the sacrament of confirmation in our hearts, let us be resolved firmly I'm going to be loyal to Jesus Christ. I'm going to be loyal to the one true church that he founded. And let us also ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, the spouse of the Holy Ghost, to help us to receive as many graces as possible when we receive confirmation. Not only the sacrament, the sanctifying grace is increased, but the special sacramental grace to be soldiers for Christ. And the amount of grace to receive is going to be proportioned to your dispositions. All of you will receive grace. All of you will receive that indelible mark on your soul. All of you become soldiers of Christ. But the amount of sacramental sacramental grace will be given to the degree that you're disposed. So let us, as we assist at Holy Mass, receive Jesus in Holy Communion. Let us ask Jesus to help us to truly stand up for him and be soldiers of Christ. Remember what the Holy Ghost did for the apostles, he can do for all of us. What the Holy Ghost did for the saints, he can do for all of us. And let us remember this. Our strength is in our weakness. When we're weak, we go to God and we are strong. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.